So in the previous video I showed you uh, where we're dealing with logarithms and how they work. And what I want to do in this video is show you how we can use the log laws to reduce this equation to a linear law. So the process that we go through involves logging both sides of the equation. And what I mean by that is that if I log both sides, I'm putting a logarithm in well, I'm effectively doing a logarithmic function of both sides, or putting a log in front of both. So I've got log of y is equal to log of ax to the n. Okay. Now, if I'm working with log, and remember in the previous video I was working with log with a specific base. So I was looking at log base 2 and log base 3 and so on. If I've just got log, this is representative of log base 10. So it's a shorthand notation for log base 10, if I'm just looking at log. Um, the reason why uh, we use a shorthand notation here is because logarithms of base 10 were so often used, so widely used, that um, it became redundant to put the 10 in. But now that we have calculators that can work with any base, log of any base, um, we sometimes put the 10 back in. But if you just see a logarithm as it is like that, then just remember that it's log base 10 that you're working with. Your calculator will have a log button and a log of different base button. So you have both. So what we've got here is that we've logged both sides of the equation. Now, if I leave the left-hand side alone, using the first law of logarithms that I introduced in the previous video, if I've got log of a times x to the n, that is the same as log of a plus log of x to the n. Okay, because the, if we've got a multiplication, then I can split the logarithms apart with the same base and put a plus between them. So, once I've got to that point, I can look at this term here and think, right, and then I can use log law number 3, because that will allow me to bring the n down to the front. So, log of y is equal to log base a plus n log of x. So, what we have here is that we have a variable y, okay, so I could call that capital Y. I've got a constant, log of a, which I could call c. I've got this n, um, I'll leave that alone, and log x, which I can say is capital X. So I can then say, well, this is the same as y is equal to nx plus c. And I have now reduced it to a linear law, because if I plot capital X against capital Y on the graph, it will give me a straight line equation. And so I can use the straight line equation to estimate values, and then be able to bring them back into the previous format using this method. So this is something you really should be able to do and follow through um, as part of the exam. And I'll show you an example of how we use this in the next video.